hello and welcome to the home of the ghost owl. And we're at our third article for Warhammer the Old World that's been put out on January the 5th for a specialist game. I certainly can say that uh, Games Workshop have put a lot of time and money and, and effort into the marketing this thing. So that's quite interesting. So here we go. We've got our, our third article it, and it's uh, another designer round table. Um, but having read through this one, I have already read through this one and the others. The others were kind of just into lore and that sort of stuff. I didn't really feel like there was much that I could add. So there's no point making a video and just reading what's there. Uh, this one, however, has some interesting answers in it that I think is uh, important just to look at, refresh and remind everybody as well. So uh, this is looking at uh, the past and future of the Stone Cold classic of Warhammer Fantasy versus Warhammer the Old World. Okay. Um, so started about five years ago, that's when the ball really began to roll. Um, yep, so this is the basic stuff, really talking about the fact it's, you know, they're, they're building something new, but they want to keep the nostalgia. Um, uh, a lot of the same motifs and things, okay. I mean, the, the one thing here that I would kind of disagree with, so it says Warhammer Fantasy Battle was a window into a certain time period in that setting. One of the interesting things for me was it was the special characters. So, and Vampire Counts is the easiest one to, to do this with. And that is, um, with the Vampire Counts, you have Vlad, Isabella, Conrad, Manfred. And, and it was Count Manfred, right? So you had these three lords that were or, or two lords and a hero i think comrade was a hero but were at different time periods and in fact if you look at when the so the vampire count wars happened they actually happened before warhammer the old world takes place and yet those characters were available with their rules in warhammer fantasy battle eighth edition so i think i just hope they don't get too hung up on this time period because we have seen in the past characters be available and the fact that you could play Vlad von Karstein leading an army even though that was hundreds of years before when the 8th edition was actually pitched, right? So there's no reason in reality that you couldn't have characters that were not in this time frame because they've done it before, Um I hope they don't get too locked into the time frame from that perspective. I get the map and the factions and what's going on around the world element, but that hasn't held them and limited them before. Kind of get the feeling that they're using the time frame to limit the release and say, well, this is the time frame, so we can't do this other stuff. It hasn't stopped them in the past. So hopefully if the game is... Uh, is successful enough and we are talking about having to be super successful maybe we'll see that expand uh, a bit more but but say in the past they've absolutely done that there have been special characters with full rules in army books that you could use that were absolutely not part of the eighth edition timeline they were very much in the past okay um, let's scroll down here. So what else we've got? So likening between Warhammer the Old World and Horus Heresy. So yes, um, both specialist games, both based upon older versions of their respective game. So yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you know if we're looking for pricing as well for new stuff, books and so on. You know the main rule book forty two pound fifty. The main Horus Heresy rule book forty two pound fifty. You know the Warhammer Horus Heresy is a good place to benchmark if we're trying to work out. And give us an indication of what we think pricing will be like. Um, so yeah, bringing back like molds and tools willing. So I think this is important. Um, a lot of people have you know said, well, why aren't you releasing dwarfs and um, you know all this stuff at the moment uh, at the same time as as Bretonians and Tomb Kings? Well, I think you know they, yes, there's the marketing element. We all know that that's the, that's the business stuff where they want you to buy into the hype of a faction release and buy into tomb kings and bretonians but at the same time there's a huge logistical thing with this and you can see that here large metal kits are difficult to make so they've done that in resin um, pulling old molds and tools out of mothballs none of the models we're releasing were found on a pallet so you know and that 
absolutely jive with, with what I understood. So my understanding was that the, when the end times was happening and, and they knew they were shutting down, you know, we saw a lot of kits go out of stock. They ran their stock of Warhammer Fantasy Battle kits into the ground uh, to, to there be almost nothing. And then we seen we saw not long after that a couple of sort of releases um, and sort of then last chances to buy and stuff go out of stock incredibly quickly. So, you know, my understanding is there's almost no stock. So while they are, these, they are releasing old kits, they're not just sat around. And also bear in mind, this is a specialist game. I think the release they're doing right now is actually fairly sizable. Two big starter boxes, right? Two. There's all the artwork that goes with that. Plus the two indexes, plus cards and everything else, plus a whole bunch of old and new models for each of the factions, two factions at the same time. Um, so I think it's actually a pretty sizable release, to be honest. Um, and then, say, considering it's a specialist game, considering they have other specialist games and they're still manufacturing... Uh, 40k and Age of Sigmar, logistically, I think it would be very, very hard, even for a company of James Workshop size, to be doing all of that and then be manufacturing in a very short time frame, in reality, from a business perspective, all of the old kits. I mean, because there's a lot, right? When you think about how many of the factions that are still core factions, we're only talking core factions, there's a lot. So I think, you know, there's an element where we have to think, okay, they're not bringing dwarves out or empire or, or whatever, even though these are old kits. I think there's a huge logistical challenge there. Uh, and I think, uh, I'm, and, I, and I don't, you know, don't blame Games Workshop for that. That's just, you know, that's, the, the, that's just life, you know. So I'm going to enjoy getting the rules. Yes, I'm lucky enough that I'm an older, older player in that I have a lot of these armies already. So I can actually go straight away from scratch and not have to buy any new miniatures. Um, but if you are brand new and you don't want to get into Bretonians or uh, or Tomb Kings, um, you know, do consider um, Warriors of Chaos in particular because most of their miniatures are still available through uh, Age of Sigma. Just need some base changes, and Beastmen have quite a few as well. Uh, so you know, if you if you don't want these two, but you don't mind going down the Warriors of Chaos route. That would be a good place to start if you want to buy something different um, and play with that if you are a new player and don't have the miniatures. So, so that's my take on that. I think there's there's an element of the business marketing hype and everything with it. I think the bulk of it is, um, yeah, they, they just don't have the resource and the logistics chain to be able to just suddenly release all the old kits back when they they don't have it they're not they're not sat in stock the, these are having to make them from scratch having to sort the tooling out that's actually quite a big process okay everyone's from a different generation that's for certain um some collectible metal models and oddities from the history of warhammer fantasy battle will be available on a made to order basis this is cool i'm really interested to know what these are going to be um but uh the fact that they're going to be doing this and doing it on made to order, um, that's great. Uh, whereas everything else you'd expect to see for representing unit profiles will be available normally. So you, you, you know, your main army roster is going to be available normally, which is which is fine. But you know, maybe they'll release some you know special version of a um, a leash priest or whatever. You know, um, maybe Crom the Conqueror is going to make a, a, a thing back, and we can use him as an exalted hero. Who knows? Uh, but uh, overall, I think that's cool. Right? It'd be great to bring some of this back. There's a lot of people like myself from a nostalgia perspective that you know want to get hold of this, some of the models that maybe we missed back in the day. Uh, so that's cool. Um, okay. That's pretty much everything there. So uh, have you blended new with old? Yeah, armies were flat with lots of troops at the same height, monsters. So this is this is true. I mean, the technology aspect of it, you know, I don't disagree with that. The only thing I would say is, um, with the troops at the same height is the, the issue of, of what you saw with Neckaf recently or my personal issue with Neckaf. If you look at this Tomb King, Tomb Guard unit right here and you go, I'm going to put Neckaf in this Tomb Guard unit, right? His rock comes up to almost the shoulder of the Tomb Guard. So you've got Neckaf's feet in line with the head, so he's going to be standing up here somewhere, Okay which for me is going to look weird in, in, a, in a unit. So 
it is something that they have to can think about on rank and file games is it's cool to have these characters on rocks to give them some height particularly in skirmish games like age of sigma because it makes them stand out it can make them look weird in rank and file games all right so you can see you know you could have this tomb king here join he looks absolutely fine but put that tomb king on a rock almost the same height as his body it's going to look weird because he's going to just be sticking at the top you know unless he's flying or something but then he's not really in the rank and file so <laughs> you know um, certainly with Nekaf, I do want Nekaf, but I will be chopping him off his rock because uh, I most I think most of the time I'm going to be wanting my characters in uh, in here or on monsters. Right, so um, yep. So looking at silhouettes, how models fit into units, battle standard bearers, champions, and so on. So yeah, but Nekaf doesn't for me doesn't fit with that. Um, legacy factions, or oh, there was a bit about bases. Have we missed that bit? Uh, did we did i did i skip past a bit about basing because ah yes um so the whole thing about is is uh you know rebasing everything there was a bit where he talked about where looking at the basing and he's absolutely correct um did i miss it or maybe he hasn't maybe we've, maybe that was somewhere else um, but yes, there's, there's absolutely a bit where he talks about basing um, and the fact that they had to do a lot of testing out of the basing. Um, maybe that's further down. Uh, that's the map. Uh, no, I can't find it. But there was the bit where he talks about the basing um, and the fact they had to do a lot of testing and everything else. He's absolutely true. I mean, even with the old rank and fire models, have you ever tried to rank up dark elf corsairs right when you don't plan it out right dark elf corsairs because of their sea dragon capes are an absolute nightmare you have to before you glue them to the base you almost have to be ranking them up to make sure they fit properly and then make sure that they are in the right order all the time so i actually had to put numbers on the bottom of the base underneath so i know what order they went in just to fit i am actually quite happy with the new basing i think it'll be much better it'll allow us to use i have much more dynamic models i'm i'm actually very happy with the rebasing i know it's a lot of work for a lot of people uh, my plan is to trim off the lip of the base and then just glue the flat square onto the new size base that will limit the amount of extra uh, work that i have to do both in painting flock and everything else um and uh, and mean that i don't have a risk of damaging feet and legs and so on so that that's actually my plan and hopefully it'll give them a little bit more stability too so um i'm not going to be cutting the bases off i'm just going to be trimming the lips off around here um but yeah i i'm actually happy with the rebasing because i think it does give more flexibility with the models and and i say there are some some units out there that already were not the easiest to rank up right um Dark elves seem to be the big one because I don't remember which elves used to have an issue too. Okay, so the legacy factions. So this is not new, ladies and gentlemen. This was here before. A few of the factions from previous Warhammer Fantasy Battle game will not feature in the old world. This is in terms of game rules, model ranges, and the ongoing background narrative. These factions will, however, get free downloadable army lists so people can try out the new system using their older model collections. Um, so that, that we knew, that's absolutely exactly what we heard before. Uh, more about this in coming weeks, though please note that they won't be considered legal for tournaments and won't receive ongoing support. Well, we knew they were Legends rules, and we know from things like 40k and so on that Legends rules don't get ongoing support. So absolutely, that was absolutely implied. Um, I think it was absolutely implied, given these were going to be PDF rules, that they probably wouldn't be considered legal for games workshop tournaments which i think is a super shame uh, personally um i'm you know i'm disappointed enough that we don't get the other factions given that a lot of these factions you know have models available <laughs> in age of sigma um you know then they've written they've actually gone through the pain of writing the rules in the first place um so they've already written the PDF rules. That's the biggest difficult bit, especially given that a significant proportion of those models are for lizard men, well, lizard men, vampire counts, for example, demons, uh, ogres are still currently available in Age of Sigma. Um, 
However, we knew we knew this to be the case. Not a surprise. It came out months ago. In fact, I even did a video on it, which factions are in and which factions are out. Uh, I think the not considered legal for tournaments, that's a new statement, official statement that that's the case. But I think it could have been implied. I personally hope that things like friendly local game store tournaments and local tournaments um, will allow the legacy factions. And, and to be honest, you know, I, I would be surprised if any of the legacy factions are meta broken, overpowered than the in core factions. We've generally seen legacy and, and historical legends units in the past be absolutely a lot worse um, than than anything that was actually on inside the core for example so my destroyer tank hunter laments this regularly um, but uh, but yeah so I you know I'd be surprised so I, I really hope they are allowed because you know they're, they're, they're a classic for, for the guys coming back it's an absolute nostalgia thing there's a lot of people coming into Warhammer fantasy as well that I've talked to um, that have come in because of the total Warhammer games of which lizard men skaven ogres demons vampire counts you know they're a big part of we just had the big chaos to war for release there's a lot of people that are really into these factions so um look it's not new it's not news the only real news is the official statement about legal for tournaments but that is only for games workshop tournaments we can hope that other tournament organizers will allow the legacy factions we hope um but uh but that's not new news. I say I did a video on it. You can go back, look. It's actually it was months ago that we had that. So we've known this is coming. We can all have been disappointed about it. Um, I'm just happy that we're getting something. I'm actually happy that we're getting at least PDF rules because they didn't have to do that. Um, so I'm still going to be able to play my lizard men. I'm still going to be able to play my dark elves and my vampire counts and so on. Uh, so, you know, overall, um, at least we've got something that we can use. And, you know, I have no doubt Games Workshop as a business, and it says here, look, if you want to come on this long-term journey with us, long-term journey, the factions and the Force of Fantasy and Ravening Hordes books are the ones to collect and play. And we want to be pretty clear about that. Absolutely the statement of today. And that when they say a long-term journey, it does sound like that it will either be um, 10 years away or never that we'll see these factions in the game two things about that first if that's the case and these factions need updating there's there's two things that will either happen there may well be some fan rules that come out to update them to be more in line with as the game develops um two you can house rule things if lizard men are ridiculously underpowered and they're facing off against bretonians give the lizard men an extra 500 points or something. You know, there's things you can do to house rule to still have fun with these factions in a non-tournament setting. The other thing is, um, Games Workshop still see Warhammer the Old World as a specialist game. All right? It is a specialist game. Can you imagine if its popularity begins to significantly increase and even challenge that of age of sigma now, do i think that's going to happen in the short term no is it possible absolutely yes um if warhammer the old world is super super successful then games workshop as a business would be absolutely remiss not to think about including these factions in the future and um, it, the amount of money and revenue that it would generate for the company. So, you know, who'd have thought 20 years ago that we'd be getting uh, Gilliman and the Lion back as, as plastic Primarchs, you know? But things happen, things change. All depends upon the success of the game and what's happening within Games Workshop itself. So never say never. It does make it sound like it's a long time away, and absolutely it could be. Certainly, I wouldn't expect to see anything in the next three years if Warhammer the Old World is super successful, you know, given the development times, design times, and everything else, um, you know, then, then maybe we'll see something. But just remember, in the meantime, yes, it sucks, um, but let's hope that other tournament organisers will allow these factions, and let's also remember that certainly for... 
lizard men, vampire counts, ogre kingdoms and demons, most of your models are still available. For dark elves, a few of the models are still available. Uh, and, you know, maybe there are third parties, 3D printing as well. Skaven, my understanding is they're going to get a big refresh in the summer. So maybe there's a whole bunch of Skaven stuff that you can get out of that. And uh, Chaos Dwarfs, that's going to be the most difficult. Uh, so you're unfortunately relegated to third parties on that. Um, so you're going to be looking, 3D printing is probably going to be the best bet with the Chaos Dwarfs. Uh, but, you know, the options options are there. Um, so, so you know, we're still going to get to play these, these factions. Uh, they're into the map, that's fine. Interesting they do mention the Total Warhammer series. One thing I do want to do from a con uh, piece of content is I do want to look. The fact that they do mention Total Warhammer in here it means that you know they, they definitely have considered that element. I want to look at the core factions and look at some of the new units that were introduced in Total War Warhammer um, for Bretonnia, for example, for the Empire to make them balance out across the other factions and see if that uh, Games Workshop take any of that and bring it into um, in, into the fold. So you know, is there going to be some sort of sp special unit we're going to see uh, that was in Total War Warhammer that, that may make it into an army list? So that's going to be a future piece of content that we're going to be looking at. Okay, and that pretty much brings us to the uh, end of this article, I think. So, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so this was the this was the base size thing. I did miss it. It was right at the end. <laughs> so yeah, he says here about uh, working out new base sizing. You know, they they did test the old and the new, um, and and it and ensure base size will let you actually let you rank up comfortably. So it's a pain, but he's absolutely right. And I've had that pain myself of trying to rank up um, certain units in particular. You know, and the fact that when you've got a unit of spearmen, they've all got to have their spears up or. You know, you're you're very limited in terms of the the posing. Well, this will actually let you do more with it, and it will let uh, Games Workshop do more in terms of dynamism with their uh, miniatures. And for me, that's a good thing. There you go, guys. That's the end of this uh, Old World Almanac Designer Roundtable. So the other two uh, are relatively um, generic stuff and nothing really to add. This one, there was a whole bunch of things in there that I did want to talk about. Um, you know, they are what they are, some good, some bad, some just, you just have to accept it. But uh, overall, there are ways forward and uh, and ways for us to play, which is the which is the most important thing. That's the, that's the end of this. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button. It's critical for me. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate it. So thank you for that in advance. Totally free for you to do it. Uh, you've been watching The Ghost Owl. Tune back in for some more Warhammer The Old World content.